some of you kids really did go on a ship, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see some of that. <laughs> Are you having fun? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> having fun? It's electricity. Yep. Listen, yep. while we're on board here, naturally, we have to be really concerned with safety, okay? Yeah. Look, I'm only going to give you a brief rundown, and then later on I want you to familiarize yourself with everything on the boat for safety, okay? Okay. The crew will tell you anything you like. Okay, come on up here, I want to show you something. Now, on your bunks you'll notice there's a bunch of these funny-looking red things. And what they are are life jackets, okay? They're really nice to put your head on when you're seasick and to use for a pillow. But the main purpose for them is to put around your neck and keep you afloat if you have to go into the water, OK? Or if you're in a boat or anything like that, you go out in one of the small boats, then you take one of these with you, just in case something happens that you didn't plan on, that we'll have a chance of coming and picking you up. Now, look, the first thing you got to learn is not only where they are, but how to put them on and how to use them. Kind of tight, isn't it? OK. You have to learn proper knots. I'm going to get the boys to come around later on and show you how to do it. But for now, I'm just going to give you some quick instruction how to tie them on, OK? So this tape here, these nice long ones, they go right around you if you're not too sick. You tie them right around you like this, and they would hold them on, OK? So acquaint yourself with them. They'll come in handy if you ever need them, all right? We've got um, lifeboats, and we've got life rafts, and all kinds of good things that if anything happens, you'll be taken well care of. All right? Now, how many of you have been on boats before? Look, first thing you want to know is parts of the ship, OK? Just so that the guy says, oh, up in the bow or down on the stern. Anyone know where the bow is? Yeah. Here. Here. Right. Anyone know what this big chunk of wood is? It's not firewood. Oh, past the brass or something. It's a yule log. No. Oh. What is it? It's a bow oh, sprit. Bow right on. Good. Anyone know what the fat end is? It's the stern. Right. Let's start moving down that way. Okay. Now look, this area here then is the bow. That's the bow sprit. These wires going up here to stays. Anyone know what this is? I'm going to point this out because it's another safety That's factor. No, this thing here. The boom. The boom. Okay. Now if the guy swings the bow too far one way, this boom's going to come across. Wang. Right. Okay. We don't want to lose anyone, so. Always keep your eye on this and make sure you don't get swatted with it. Right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Anyone know what this big stick is? A uh, four mast. Right. Hey, you guys must have been on boats before. You know more about it than I do. Right, this is a foremast. Okay, anyone know what this big stick's called? If that one's the foremast, what would this be called? The backmast. Back back no, it's the main mast, they call it. Okay? You're doing pretty good, though. Who's the backmast? No, that is the one they call the main mast. That one's the foremast. Okay? Right, now we're going to trundle along to where they do all the steering and kind of navigating and messing around, okay? You always see a guy up here on the wheel, I hope. Okay. All right, now this is the wheelhouse, okay? And this is where we steer the ship from and point her onto the, or try to keep her onto the course that we want her to travel on. Uh, right now it's pretty hard to steer because we're running on sails. <laughs> And consequently, the uh, engine not running, you can't have the hydraulic motor running. So this steering gear is usually driven by a big hydraulic motor, which I'll show you down below later on. And um, the, uh, and when the engine's off, the uh, hydraulic motor's not running. So you're doing this by just by arm power, yeah. and it makes it a little bit harder. But um, this little rig here is our magnetic compass. And uh, anyone know how the magnetic compass works? By magnets. All right. Why does anyone know why it points to the north? Because the magnetic force. Right, right. Okay. So that, if this continually points at the north, then the, this this card in here that's floating in there that's called the compass rose, that stays in one position. And in actually, we're going around it. When we turn, we move around it. It doesn't move. It stays fixed on north. Okay. So right now. We should be steering a course of 090, which is due east, OK? And so we keep moving this wheel. We swing it one way, and the, and the boat goes this way, and we swing it the other way, 
Naturally, a ball swings the other way. Okay. It's not a not a yarn like um, like a sailor's yarn or a tall story, you know. But um, it's something that really happened to me a long time ago before I became a Christian. Um, a friend of mine who was uh, oh really a good friend. He was really concerned for me, you know. And uh, I used to say, oh, it's great. That's good for other people. I don't need it, you know. And uh, it kind of bothered him, you know. It kind of. He used to try and convince me, you know, that I needed Jesus Christ and stuff like that. And he would, he, he was thinking of all different ways. How can I get to this guy, you know? What interests him? So uh, he, he was telling me once, he said, you know, he said, I knew a, he was telling me a story, you know, it's like Jan. He was, he said, uh, there was this guy who bought himself a great big boat, you know. He'd always wanted a boat. And he bought this huge boat. Oh, when he got it, you know, oh, it's all he ever wanted. So, uh, jumped on board, you know, and he had a crew and everything, but oh, he's gonna run it himself. Puts her astern, he heard that he gets three toots on the horn, and you know, and out he comes, smash, right in the first ship he came to. He's about wrecked it. And uh, anyway, they get it repaired, and uh, he hasn't learned. Away he goes again, and he comes steaming out the harbor, harbor, bang, right onto a reef, so tugs pull him off a reef, take him back into port, repair it again, and all the time, the crew, including the skipper, you know, were saying, hey, you know, why don't you let us run it? We know how to run it. Like, the captain, he knows how to show you where to go and what to do. Yeah, like you. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this was a little different. And uh, now the guy's stubborn, you know, he's going to run his own show, you know, he's going to run his own ship. And uh, he just about wrecks her again, almost gets drowned. And uh, finally, this guy that was telling me this yard, he said, uh, what would you think of a guy like that, Vic? So I said, uh, <laughs> you know, I said, I think he's pretty dumb, you know. He said he's trying to run his own ship and he doesn't know how and he's got a skipper. So he said, well, then, you ever thought about that with Jesus Christ? He wants to show you how to run your life, just the same. He's standing there waiting to show you, you know. And, no, you're going to run your own life and you get into trouble here and you kind of blow it there and mess it up over here. And then one day he said, maybe you'll realize that it takes Jesus Christ. And no one had ever, ever put it to me that way before, you know. I never, never kind of thought of it like that. I thought, oh, you know, that, that stuff's fine, you know, it's good for kids, keeps them off street corners, but I don't need it. You know, never once thinking that there was someone waiting to run my life for me, you know. Just like that captain was waiting to run that ship for the guy. And I suppose it, you know, that it, uh, it got me thinking to the point that it wasn't long after that that I became a Christian.
and accepted Jesus Christ, you know. It was only a little while ago, too. This is Scales, a mighty race car with a little something extra under the hood. Scales is a ferocious friend and he loves surprise attacks. Leader one inside Kale sold seven. You energize Scales by revving his hidden motor. And when she's rid his head, there's no escape. Unless you're as fast as Leader One, you can't fly forever, Flame Brain. Go Bucks! Scales, enemy monster race car, Leader One and Psycho, each sold separately, new from Tonka. You're my very best friend, my cabbage patch kid. Now you can take a bath with me. Come into the Water Palace, where cabbage patch kids turn bath times into fun times. Isn't she cute? Ride the Ferris wheel. Round and round you go. <laughs> you can discover a secret passage. Time for swim. Okay, my turn. Come back tomorrow. Cabbage Patch Kids Water Palace with four figures. Some assembly required. It's a grand toy. You can imagine they're from Gobatron. Every Gobot you can imagine. Collect all your favorites like Smallfoot, Night Ranger, Dive Dive, Leader One. Fighting the evil Psykill, Blockhead, Waterwalk, Slicks, and Spoons. It's gonna be awesome. Mighty robots, mighty vehicles, robots. All the Gobots you can imagine, each sold separately from Tonka. Thruster is here, and you can pretend it's Psykill to renegade Gobot headquarters for conquering Earth. The parents put it together, four AA batteries not included. It's Psykill! Robots sold separately. Thruster even has an electronic motion detector. I won't stop until every guardian is captured. Neither one won't stand for this. Neither will you, Scooter. <laughs> Thruster, the new renegade Gobot headquarters. Psykill and Scooter each sold separately from Tonka. <laughs> you can tie a bullet? Okay, you told me you could tie all of them. Could you tie a bowling? What, bowling? A bowling, yeah. Bowling? <laughs> a bowling, yeah, okay. Look, hold a rope like that in your left oh, hand. Fire. No, hold the rope like that in your left hand. Not no. upside down, that way. Look, look. No. Yeah, like that. Now you follow me, okay? Ready? Two. One. Two. Three. Round the back. And four. <laughs> Round the back. Okay, now what kind of mess you got? <laughs> you said a bowl and you could tie. <laughs> you can. What do you got? Look at this. Look, there's a, look, that's it. <laughs> look at this. Okay. Now, let, now let's see. If we, now let's see if we can do it the right way. Okay. And it really is simple. Really. Look. Okay. Now look. Bang. Over the top like that and drop it through. See, the beauty of this knot is it doesn't matter how tightly you pull on it, you can always undo it. Captain Hookins reminds me of a famous sailor in the Bible. Does anyone know who I'm talking about? I know. I think it's Paul. Mm, you're absolutely right, do we? <laughs> Paul was a Christian like Captain Hookins, and he was letting the Lord guide his life like the captain is. He had been put in prison for preaching about Jesus, God's only son. Everywhere he went, he told people about Jesus dying on the cross for their sins. Mm -hmm. He told them how he came alive again and was waiting to be their savior. You know, a Roman soldier put Paul and some other prisoners aboard a ship and started toward Rome. And Paul knew enough about traveling on the seas in the wintertime to realize that they'd have trouble. So don't go, he warned them. If you do, the ship, the cargo, and all our lives will be endangered and maybe even lost. But they didn't take Paul's advice, did they? They sailed on, and a terrible storm came up. The sailors couldn't even steer the ship. Then they threw everything they didn't need overboard to make the ship lighter. And the storm kept thrashing them around. No sun, no moon, no stars, just storm. Day after day. And then after a while, they had no idea where they were. They didn't think they'd ever live to see the end of that storm. Paul spent a long, long time praying for God to guide them all. And when they'd given up hope, he stood up and said, Sirs, you should have taken my advice and not sailed. But be of good cheer. Last night, God sent an angel to tell me that I'm going to stand before Caesar in Rome. 
And because of that, not only I will, I will be safe, but also everyone else on the ship will survive the storm, too. Our ship will be wrecked upon a certain island, you see. Since Paul belonged to the Lord and was doing his very best to obey him, God was responsible to take care of him. God loved him very much, just like he loves all of us. And after 14 days and nights of being tossed all over the sea, land was sighted. That's a long time to be in a storm, isn't it? Yeah. They all ate for the first time in two weeks. Can you imagine? And they were really, really hungry. <laughs> and they were thanking God for his care. And as they neared, they tried to bring the ship safely in as they came close to land. But it ran aground. And the prisoners and the sailors and the soldiers all had to swim or float safely to land, hanging on to whatever they could find floating. But you know what? Everyone was safe just as God had promised. Our lives are sort of like a journey by ship. Sometimes the sailing is smooth, and sometimes the seas get all stormy. It doesn't really matter what the traveling is like as long as we have a good pilot, though, does it? The Lord Jesus wants to be our pilot and guide, just like he was for Paul. If you've never asked him to be your pilot, why don't you do that today? Ask him to be your personal savior from sin right now, right while I'm singing this song. Jesus, be my This God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide. Talking about pilots and guides and having Captain Hookins here today reminds me of some special things that we want to send to all our Treehouse Club kids watching the show. It's a really nifty magazine just for children, and it's called what? Young Pilot. You are right, Bradley. <laughs> we want to send a copy of that uh, magazine along with the Treehouse Club poster that we really like a lot. And a sticker. You got that up there, there you guys? Yeah, right there. And a sticker. You got the <coughs> sticker up. Oh, boy, yeah, on the ball, this whole group is. To everyone who writes us a letter. So why not take down our address and write to us this week? And do we have time for a... I wonder if we have time for a riddle. Oh, we always have time for a riddle. You think so? Sure. Okay, well, one quick riddle. I've Mr. got one. I'm going to catch it today. You gonna, got it, then? You're going to catch uh, it? What do you get when you cross a wild, ferocious tiger and a mosquito? Huh. Oh, I got it. you this time. <laughs> Brad knows. Come on, Brad. Tell us the answer. What's the answer? <laughs> Can you what? You got it. I got what? you. Good. I'll tell you the answer. Okay. 
The answer is, I don't know either, but if you're going to swat it, you better not miss. <laughs> <laughs> well, yours were to write, if you would like some more of that wonderful humor. And write in for your poster. And in the United States, the Treehouse Club is in Warrenton, Missouri. So write the Treehouse Club, Warrenton, Missouri. And in Canada, the address is the Treehouse Club, Box 165, Winnipeg, Manitoba. That's the Treehouse Club, Box 165, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Well, kids, I hope our show has made you think a lot about who is piloting your life. The Lord Jesus is my pilot. I sure hope he's yours. If he is, why don't you tell me when you write? Tell me all about it. I'll see you next time, and remember something very, very important I don't want you to forget this week. Jesus loves and cares for you. Just depend on him. He's a friend who walks beside you. Let him take your hand. We're going to see you next time, okay? I hope you come back. Bye. 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 the home of Ripley's Believe It or Not, featuring the strange and the bizarre. Join us. Tonight at 7 here on CHCH TV 11. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web, any size, catches feet, just like flies. Look out, here comes the Spider-Man. Is he strong? Listen, bud. He's got radioactive blood. Can he swing from a thread? Take a look overhead. Hey there, there goes the Spider-Man. In the chill of night, at the scene of a crime, by the street of light, he arrives just in time. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. are pleased to announce that economical, dependable electric water heating is provided for the visiting pitchers. Up to 40% more hot water. So even when the visitor's luck runs out, their hot water won't. When you know a truck or two, you just know Dodge is a truck for you. Brand new truck, brand handsome too. Think of all the trucks you've tried. You know that One ram tough act to follow. So grab one by the horns and go. Grab one by the horns and go. Dodge Trucks 86, a ram tough act to follow. Do you know what wins medals? We do. Because we've watched swimmers get up and dedicate a lot of years and thousands of hard miles for just one chance to shine at the Olympics. And